Hey, hey, and welcome to this, another episode of Work Smarter, Not Harder with me, Tony Harmer. And in this movie, we're going to be looking at making a firework scene like you can see now with everything made in Illustrator. So I'm here inside a blank document in Illustrator and in case you're interested, the profile I'm using here is Art and Illustration and this is an RGB document at 960 by 560 but that really doesn't matter. You can use, of course, whatever you like. So before I start building the fireworks, what I'm actually going to do is build out the night sky. So I'm just going to tap M to get the rectangle tool here and then I'm going to draw the rectangle in which my sky will appear like so. And then I'm going to tap D here for the default. Okay, and I want to get rid of the stroke. Now my fill is in front at the moment, so I'm just gonna tap X to bring the stroke to the front, and then tap slash to get rid of the stroke, and then tap X again to bring the fill to the front and then hit the period key to apply a gradient. Now, you might have noticed I had a gradient there in the first place, but that's only because I've just been working with one. So ordinarily, of course, it wouldn't look like that. That's a quick way to get a gradient in the background. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make some changes just here to this. So I'm going to click on the left hand stop here. Let's bring the opacity of that up to 100%, then double click on that and get in and change the color. So I'm gonna have a sort of a darkish blue just there. If the one I wanted wasn't in this swatch set, then of course I could come out and mix my own as well. So if I, if I drop that down a little bit like so, and then I'll double click on the right hand swatch and I'll change the color for that. So again, I could mix this out. So I just want this to be a slightly darker blue and the others, there we go, towards black. That's really, really good. Then I'm going to add a new fill. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to hold down the command key, that would be control on Windows, and hit slash. That adds me a new fill. Now at the moment, it's exactly the same as the one underneath it. If I go to the appearance panel, you'll see that it has indeed been added just there. In fact, if I undo that, Okay, and then use the shortcut again there. It's like magic in front of your very eyes. So now I'm gonna add a little bit of atmosphere to this. So I'm gonna come down to the gradient panel here. Okay, because this fill is focused. So I'll go to the gradient panel and I'm gonna change a couple of things here. First of all, I'm going to double click uh, this end of this and from the swatches, I'm gonna choose this RGB magenta here on both ends. And what I'm going to do is make one of those ends completely transparent like so. So that just blends through like so. I'll then make that radial. And as it happens, I've got that the wrong way around. So I'm just going to reverse the gradient by clicking this little button here. And then I'm going to do some modeling with this. So I'm going to zoom out just a bit. Okay, and then tap G to get my gradient tool and the annotator. And then I'm gonna pull that up to the top here I'm gonna make that a bit bigger and a little bit more elliptical. Just gonna pan just a little bit there, holding down the space bar to do that. Okay, and rotate that around a little bit. That's kind of nice just where it is. I'll make that a bit bigger still. And I'm gonna change this end here. This is too opaque. So I'm gonna drop that down to about 40%. There you are. That's nice and subtle there like so. Once I've done that, I'm going to hold down the command key again and hit slash. Once more, that duplicates that fill in the appearance panel. So I'm going to bring this one down here. And you can see just by moving this around, you get some really great effects when these things are overlaying. And in fact, some of the beautiful complex illustrations you see in Illustrator are built just this way. As a matter of fact, I'm so keen on that. I think I'm going to pull the offset just here just to change the way that's drawn. So it's a bit brighter now at the bottom. And I'm going to just drop down the opacity for both ends of those things there. I'll make this one 20% just on that end, just nice and soft there. And I'll do command slash again for another new fill. This time I'm going to fill both ends of that with light blue, like so. So I'm just double clicking each end. I'm choosing exactly the same color stop there. And then I'm going to just pretty much put that back the way it should be. 
and drop that down here, rotate that around a little bit. And I actually want to increase the opacity of this stop here. So let's bring that up to about 70% and that's way too big just at the moment. So I'm going to scale that down. There we go. And it's just to get that idea of a nice soft lighting in the sky. And you can tune that to be however you want that to be in there. I might just bring that down just a little bit more. I think maybe 50% or less. Let's just use the arrow keys. I'm just going to dial that down. There, perfect. That will do. So now I've got that set up the way I want it. Again, this is all still with one rectangle in the appearance panel. I'm going to add one more fill here. So command slash again to do that. And I'm going to change the gradient now completely. I'm going to go for one of the preset gradients here to start off with. So I'll click on the little preset thing at the top there. And then choose white to black just to begin with. I'm going to dial that round to 90 degrees there like so. Okay, and I'm going to change both ends of this to black. And then just reduce the opacity of the bottom stop just there. Okay, so at the moment it's just darkening all of that stuff up. Then with this fill still targeted in the appearance panel, which if you haven't clicked anywhere else, that should be uh, the way it is and remember this needs to remain selected this rectangle the whole time i'm going to add a photoshop effect to it so i'm going to click effect i'm going to come down to the photoshop effects here and to pixelate i'm going to choose mezzotint just here so once i do that i want medium dots which was handy that was selected already and hit ok you see now I've got these speckles everywhere. Now that's a little bit full on, so I'm going to do two things here to this fill. I'm going to change the opacity. So I'm going to dial that down just a shade, about 60 some odd percent just there will do. And then change the blending mode for that to overlay. So there you are, that's much softer. I might actually bring the opacity there back up just a little way now. And it needs to be very soft really, so... That's fine. And overlay, soft light, both of those would work pretty well for that. Hard light would be a bit too harsh. But again, if you tune that down with the opacity, that might work uh, for you like so. Okay, so there we are. That's done. So there you are. Nice night sky thing there. I'm going to go to my layers panel just here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new sub layer inside of here. And then I'm going to lock the rectangle layer there and just... For the minute, I'm going to turn that off. Okay, so I'm working in this sub layer. I'll actually rename it Firework just here. There we are. So now that's renamed, I'm going to draw a short line. So I'm just going to draw with the line tool. Just here, backslash, by the way, is the accelerator for the line tool. Now I'm going to zoom in on that and pan here just so you can see the whole thing. I'm going to dial the stroke width here up to about 12 points. That will suit me for this particular exercise. Once I've done that, I need to hit return just to validate that because you can see here this is still focused. So if I hit return, it now returns the focus back to the application. I'm going to hold down shift and tap W, which gets me the width tool. And then I'm going to move along here and make some width adjustments. So you can see the dot that's trailing me, hopefully there. I'm going to push inwards just on that end, just for the moment, just to get that a bit narrower. I'm going to come down to the bottom of the stroke and I'm going to push that right in, just there, just to get that tapering right the way off. Because what I'm actually imagining here is I'm building one of the particles coming off of the firework. Okay, so I actually want this to be a little bit wider at the end, like so. And then if I go out to this end, I actually want that to be pretty much narrow, like that. There we go. That's exactly the shape I want. So I'm going to keep that. I'm actually going to go to the width profile panel here and add that profile. So I'm going to call that particle. Just there, of course, you can name yours whatever you like. So now that I've got that particle, I want to actually build a gradient for it. Now, looking at the toolbox on the left hand side, I can see that my fill 
has focus. It's still in front and I don't want that to be the case. So I'm going to tap X on my keyboard to bring the stroke to the front. And then I'm going to hit the period key on my keyboard, which of course applies a gradient like so. And it's applying the most recently used gradient. I'm going to change this to a radial gradient. So by default, that kind of draws the radius as it would on a shape from the middle. I'm going to use these stroke controls here to apply the gradient across the stroke, which does some really, really interesting stuff on a stroke like this with a profile. In fact, this actually builds underneath it sort of a gradient mesh. And if you expand it, that is exactly what you'd get. But that's not what I want to do right now. What I want to do is model the colors. So in the middle here, that's the left hand stop. If I change where that is, you can see how that's working. So I want to restore the opacity to that for 100 percent. Then I'm going to change the color here to really, really bright yellow in this particular case. OK, and I'm going to scale that off just a little bit with a little bit of orange on this side. So I'll just change that stop to orange. Now I'm going to bring that in a bit like so. And then I'm going to alt drag a copy of that stop. So hold down the alt key and drag a copy across there like so or an option key if that's what you have. Uh, option alt, same thing. OK, so once I've got that stop, I'm then going to change the opacity of that down to zero percent. So you see, I've now got this nice kind of feathered effect here. Now, this isn't quite harsh enough for me, so I'm just going to hold down shift and tap W just for a minute just to kind of bring that profile up a little bit. And in fact, there you can see the underlying gradient mesh uh, that's being made by the application. There you go. That kind of suits what I'm after really. I might drop the opacity down just a shade on all of these things because they're never completely opaque. So I'm just going to drop that down on each one of those stops, okay, down to something less than a hundred. I might also change this blending midpoint here so that blends right the way out to the edge. So between those last two stops, just pushing the blending midpoint more towards the right hand side. I think you can get within 13% I think it is, yep, I do remember correctly of that, but around about 66% there is doing just great. So now I've got that, it's time to zoom out again just here so we can see the whole picture as it were. And we're going to apply some effects to this. I might just zoom in just a little bit more just to make it easier for you to see. So with the stroke selected, and I'm going to go to the appearance panel now and make sure that the whole path is targeted here because I want this to apply to the whole path. First thing I'm going to do is get a radius of these things going. So I'm going to come up to the effect menu here, come down to distort and transform, and then choose transform. I'll just move that so it's easier for you to see what I'm doing. And I'll turn on preview. The first thing I want to do is to actually set the registration point for this transformation because I want them to transform kind of around the center. I'm going to choose this bottom left point like so just by clicking on that to change that. And then what I want to do is I want kind of 14 different copies around here. So I'm going to add 13 additional copies to this. Now you won't see anything change at the moment because they're all in exactly the same place. What I'm going to do is change the angle. So I'm going to do 360, which is the number of degrees in a circle, divided by 14. And if I hit the tab key, that gives me 25.71. You can see they're being distributed around there like so. OK, that's good. So I'm going to hit OK and that's done. It's a little bit hard just on here at the moment, so I'm going to add a feather effect to soften that off. The gradient's blurring it a little bit, but I want it to be just a bit more. So I'm going to cut to the effect menu and then down to stylize and feather. This shouldn't need that much. I'll turn on the preview there. In fact, that's way too much, 1.76. Let me just dial that down to 1. That's pretty good, actually. I think I'll leave that at one, I'll hit OK. Now, something else I could do here is really build in a little bit more motion to this. So 
I'm going to come up and choose the effect and down to the Photoshop effects for this one and radial blur like so okay and I'll choose zoom just here and I'm going to go for about 20 something 22 uh, would be really good I think for that and hit OK so I've got this zoom going on okay like that if you're seeing bits of pixelation in here by the way that's because I've got a small graphics card issue at the moment which we're just trying to resolve uh, and the GPU preview is off at the minute but this would reproduce perfectly well so don't uh, worry too much about that I'm going to go to the effect menu now and I'm going to come down again to distort and transform because this is great for one burst but of course fireworks have loads of particles shooting out at different speeds so let's come down and choose effect distort and transform transform again now because I have an instance of that effect on Illustrator is just going to check and just say you know that you've got it already but I want to apply a new one which is great so I'll apply a new one this time I want the effect to go around the center of all of these things together so earlier on it was the left hand corner because I wanted them to rotate around that now I want them to rotate around the center which is the default and what I essentially want to do here is create smaller copies of this so I'm going to click in the field for horizontal scaling hold down shift and tap the down arrow one two three times just there to get that down to 70% uh, I'll tab through to vertical and hold down shift and tap the down arrow one two three times there to do exactly the same thing okay and then I'm going to change the angle of rotation here so this because I've got 14 copies there I actually want to rotate those by at 14 degrees like so okay oh that's the, my logic for it anyway and in the number of copies I'm just going to choose seven here so that's half of the total number that I've got there and if I hit tab you should see that that's now building me those nice little bursts out there like so so that's kind of taking shape I'm going to hit OK again and now I'm going to just do a couple of other things because at the moment these are all super linear and super geometric whereas they'd be trailing in a slightly different way there'd be a little bit of a wave as they disappeared outwards so I'm going to apply a warp to that so up to the effect menu down to warp and I'm going to choose wave for this one and see how that one works out and actually by what I've got there which is a negative amount you can see there's kind of a little twist going on there so I want to dial that down just a little bit so I'm going to go for start out with maybe 10 or 11 percent that's maybe not enough let's dial it up a bit more and a bit more yeah let's go for midway between those two things so I've gone for about 16 there just enough of a wave uh, on that for it to work really really well and they're all still a little bit close together so one more effect I think should do that and the effect I've done this with before is to use pucker and bloat so again it's down to distort and transform and pucker and bloat just here if I turn on preview so I'm actually going to pull this into pucker like so by about 30 some odd percent and that should there you go that's much more convincing in terms of a boom and you can see the more I do that the further these things go away so you can model these as much as you like if I hit OK now that's the firework effect more or less uh, complete okay so let's go to the layers panel and turn on the visibility for our rectangle so we can see how that's building like so so there's our first firework so all I do now to build out more is perhaps to build a couple of other profiles that I could use here I'll drag a few more out to different locations on the artboard like so so a few different places there I'm not going to put them all close together okay but just into different places so let's get one more down over here that should do for the purpose of this example then all you need to do to model these is to change the different attributes of the appearance so if I wanted this one for example to be bigger than the others I can click on pucker and bloat here dial that out let me just turn on preview just there so you can see that 
like so. I'll be glad when this graphics card issue is fixed. There's such a lag on that. There you go. So dial that out like so. That one's great. I want to change the color of this one as well. And that's achieved really, really easily. I don't have to go into the gradient to do that. I can just come up to the recolor artwork button at the top. Okay, go to edit. And then I can just dial in the new colors I want. Now, if I want them to keep the same sort of proportions, I can link the two by clicking this link icon and then just dial this around to wherever I want this to be, like so. Or, of course, I can separate them completely and then just manually push these to where I want these to be. There you go. And you can see that's building that out. Now, the advantage here is that each time you do that, it actually builds you a new copy of that gradient so you'll have gradients in there in fact if it was saved it would make me a new copy so again do this one here so we can change a few different things about this i'm just going to change the size on these okay and then easily uh, done after that you've got a complete firework scene so that's it we're done for now don't forget to subscribe reach out to me via twitter or follow me on my facebook page you'll find those details coming along in just a moment keep on watching and until next time see ya